Have you ever gone to a retail store, or grocery store, and bought more items than intended? Why is that? Have you ever wondered why all these stores have similar visual characteristics? Everything is put in place for you to overconsume. In this video, I will be exploring the tactics. Used in the retail environment to encourage consumers to buy beyond their actual need. Discussing the use of store layouts, product placements, and virtual merchandising in stimulating overconsumption. Before a store is brought near you, a lot of things are put into consideration: the demographic, who is the target audience. Population, the age group of the inhabitants of the area, their work schedule, their income, their lifestyle, and fashion sense. Everything is put into account and documented before the design starts. Why? For the retailers to know if their product matches that demographic, what to sell to the audience, and how to present it. Their work schedule, in order to know what hour of operation is best suited for that area. Income, to know what type of product the people living in that area or visiting would be able to afford. Age group, if they are 65 plus retirees, below 25 or 30s, or students, or living alone. New families with no children. Or children that are infants or toddlers, old families with high school or college children, lifestyle, to understand what their nightlife is like. Are they home before dusk, or do they tend to be out partying? Hence, the availabilities of nightclubs and bars in certain areas. Fashion sense, most especially for clothing retailers. To know what type of clothes to bring to the area, are they minimal, classic, streetwear, at leisure, business, and many more? All these is accounted for before the design can begin. Let's begin with the store layout. The prime objective is to make the customers get lost in the store. However, don't make it too complex in order for them to exhibit frustration. In the words of my commercial design instructor, make a design that will make the customers stay longer in the store. That was our prime objective. Before all the other technical design rules of minimum width of thirty-six inches, standard seventy-two or six feet for passability. Not only for the visual appeal. But for slight complexity, in order for their eyes to be drawn in different directions, so they can potentially buy something else. Frequently bought accessories placed close to the checkout, another opportunity to buy something else. Colors and lighting, because it draws people. An example with colors can be the area full of people who enjoy green sceneries. The store would not only have green sceneries inside, but also would likely use it to beautify the storefront. Other areas where people are sustainability oriented would have colors that signify sustainability and minimalism, like browns, white cream, earth tones. All these to appeal to customers. Moving on to product placement. If you go to the toy section for toddlers at different retailers, you will notice that the most expensive toys and play sets are put at the bottom of the shelf. Have you ever wondered why or noticed this occurrence? Due to the height of the toddler, there is only so much they can see. Hence, why the most shiny, colorful object or toy is put at their eye level. Children, especially toddlers in this case, would point at the object, asking their parents to buy it. 
If their parents don't buy it, they make a scene, pressuring their parents in most cases to buy it so as to not cause a scene. Another example can be in the constant changing of merchandise placement, especially in grocery stores. You would go to the grocery store like you always have done, going to pick up an item you constantly buy, and cannot mistake the aisle, only to find that it is not there, not because it is sold out, but because things have been rearranged, and it's in a new aisle now. You go around looking for it. On your way, other things catch your eye, and suddenly things that you didn't need are now. In your shopping cart, then you find it. After roaming around the whole store, you have spent more time than you anticipated, and now you're checking out with not only the item you intended to buy, but all the other things you came across while looking for it. Tell me in the comments how often this happens to you. It happens to me, even with the knowledge of these tactics. And having a background in commercial interior design. Also note that there is a reason why necessities like milk, egg, and bread are placed in the back by most retailers. It forces the customers to navigate through the other merchandises to get them to spend more time in the store. Hence, creating the urge to buy more. Finally. The visual merchandising aspect. Going back to the clothing retailers and their use of specific lighting fixtures, one of which can be seen in the window displays, and the use of spot lighting to create emphasis on the item of clothing. Clothing with bright colors, depending on the target audience. Their best sellers, eye catching. For the consumers to walk into the store and see what the store has to offer, while on the other hand, the retailers can begin the previous tactics stated, having you end up with something more at the end. Everything is put in place not by mistake, but to create an urge for you to buy more. Thank you for tuning in to Essay's Essay.